as I thought about this, I realized there are three particular things to keep in mind as you're thinking about archetypes, whether it's the personal ones that you're thinking of choosing for yourself or whether it's um, the larger perspective, which is what I've been trying to paint. The first thing to keep in mind is that they are evolving. And so a particular archetype that might have been seen through a patriarchal lens 100 years ago or 60 years ago or even 30 years ago deserves to expand and is perhaps seen through a new lens or could be seen through a new lens now. And so it's important for you to be using your awareness to determine whether or not the archetype, that the version of it you're reading about has been brought up to date to the best of our abilities. The study of archetypes has a historical edge to it. The concept itself didn't really exist until Carl Jung came along. And then there were, of course, all the students of Carl Jung. And then there were students who weren't students of his. And we know how these various educational platforms ripple out. That's how it works. And so what that means is that if I go back to the source, of proposing archetypes, and I read what Carl Jung wrote, even though I'm a really big fan of his, I don't necessarily agree with everything Carl Jung wrote. And it's not because I'm an upstart know-it-all, it's because it's a lot of time has passed. And that's what evolution is. And it's not even that much time. But in the period of time since Carl Jung first started writing about archetypes, there have been many, many, many theories that worked on his theory, and many of them aren't really good fits anymore because they were so um, patriarchal, frankly. And that was that time. And so we don't look at a Victorian idea and think, that there's something wrong because it's not acceptable anymore. We just realize that that was a Victorian idea and thank God we were able to grow past it and move past it. And that's just a small indication of how the whole process of human understanding works. Now, even this might be too intellectual and you're just thinking, okay, Jane, get to the point where you're headed with this, okay? And I can accept that. But my point is that you're going to find perspectives when you research a particular archetype that you're interested in that range from being very historical and because of that possibly patriarchal or um, I don't know whether they're ever racist. I haven't done that much research. But anyhow, this is why the third chakra is important. You have to think about it and decide for yourself whether what you're reading resonates. Second thing to keep in mind is that there are plenty of opportunities. I might have to pick this up so I can read it. I can't read my own writing. There are plenty of opportunities for people to discuss the same universal truths based on who they are, where they live, what their life experience has been, and what they're, this is important, what they're ready for. And I thought of dying as an example. So a master dyer has all of the skills totally under his or her belt and knows dying at a deep, deep level intuitively, but also because of all the work that's put into it, understands it chemically, hands down, gets it all, natural dying, MX dying, whatever it is. And this is probably true of everything. But that doesn't mean that if you've never done any dying before, you're going to be able to step into that world. So you need a light version of dying in order to get excited about it just enough. You just want to bite off enough so you get excited, but you can still do it successfully. And so that's the idea behind, I think, these websites that take archetypes and translate them into a form that's easier for people to digest and understand because the reality is that we could go really deep with all of this archetypal stuff as a symbolic language. And remember, it's not threatening my spirituality and it's not threatening my um, intellectual capacity. It's another gift. 
that deepens how I see the world. And that means it can go really deep. But maybe I'm not ready for that yet. And if not, I'm not ready for that yet, then a poster that has a quote on it that really grabs me, that's a good thing. And looking at a chart that acts as though there are only 12 archetypes that you can choose from, that's okay. You've got time to go further than that. And so it's important to keep track of what the continuum is and realize that we understand what we understand, partly because of what we already know and partly because of what we've been raised to believe, but partly because of what we're ready to accept too. So that's the second point. Third point, let's see. The third point is that it's there whether you're ready for it or not. So maybe the whole archetypal thing hasn't really, you're, you're following along, but it's not really zinging you. That's okay. Maybe it never will. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean you have to think about the air you breathe or you have to think about gravity. There are a lot of things that are, and maybe that's not as great an analogy as it could be, but the reality is that the truths exist around us, whether we're ready to accept them or not. And isn't that good news? Because that means that when we're ready, it'll be there. Maybe it's something, maybe I'll, my taste will change and I'll grow into it. I didn't like asparagus when I was a kid. Now I love it. I eat it every day. So our tastes and our readiness for things changes all the time. And so that means we can rest easy into the reality that maybe it doesn't feel really uh, important or real for us right now. But that's no reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We can still keep we can still keep paying attention and maybe we'll have one of those aha moments, which is what it sounds like happened with my friend who's now interested in the alchemist. So the whole shebang's evolving with and around us, but there's no pressure to be conscious and active about it. Because it's gonna happen anyway. You're being carried along on the most beautiful wave and your only job is to show up and do the right thing to the best of your ability with the day that you've got. So if you wanna know or read or see more or go anywhere that quest takes you, then go. Host, oh sorry, but use your instincts to guide whether you agree or not. And that made me think of this poem from Rumi and I wanna read, read it to you as a way of kind of wrapping up this, this conversation. Deliberation is one of the qualities of God. Throw a dog a bit of something he sniffs to see if he wants it. Be that careful. Sniff with your wisdom nose. Get clear and then decide. The universe came into being gradually over six days. God could have just commanded, be. Little by little, a person reaches 40 and 50 and 60 and feels more complete. God could have thrown full-blown prophets flying through the cosmos in an instant. Jesus said one word and a dead man sat up. But creation unfolds like calm breakers. Constant slow movement teaches us to keep working like a small creek that stays clear that doesn't stagnate, but finds a way through numerous details deliberately. Deliberation is born of joy like a bird from an egg. Birds do not resemble eggs. Think how different the hatching out is. A white leathery snake from one egg, a sparrow's egg, a quince seed, an apple seed, very different things look similar at one stage. These leaves, our bodily personality, seem identical, but the globe of soul fruit we make, each is elaborately unique. Isn't that beautiful? So each of our perspectives on the archetypes, whether we're all looking at the alchemist or whether we're thinking about the others that are more distinctively our own, each of our takes has the right 
and the glory of being different and how that affects our creativity and what we do to become more creative on a daily basis, that's an individual thing too. And so what does research do? This is the good part about surfing around on the internet or putting 20 minutes into listening to me talk right now. The more food for thought you have, the more opinions you have to push against, whether you agree or you don't agree is not really the point. That's what shapes you into the special fruit that you are. And the fact that we are all so different and all so willing to come together and share that as a community is the, the really lasting, beautiful thing about all of this. <laughs>